What is up everyone, Movie Way, I'm back again with another video and today is going to be my 4K collection. Now I have done one of these on the channel just over a year ago now and I had about 20 titles in there. I'd only just started collecting 4Ks back then and as time has elapsed I've got about 70 odd titles here now. Now I know that's not the biggest 4K collection here on YouTube but it doesn't really matter does it? Everyone's quantity is going to be a little bit different there. Now, if I am after a movie for my collection, I will always check to see if there's a 4K first before buying the Blu-ray, because I will always buy the 4K over the Blu-ray. However, I don't really tend to upgrade my Blu-rays to 4K. <sighs> I mean, I'll just take a lot of, you know, replacing movies and stuff. But there is some coming out these days that I am thinking about doing. Some of my favourite films, like Speed. I know Heat and the Lost Boys are down the pipeline, so... I may do it in future, but it's not something I do right now. And lastly, there might be a few films here in a franchise where I don't own the whole franchise on 4K. There might just be one or two of them films, which is kind of weird, I know. But, <laughs> you know, I, just when it come down to buying the 4K I needed for the franchise, it was out on 4K um, by the time, you know, I got around to buying it. So... I'll explain that more along the way. So let's just get into it with 1917. Now, this was the second or third film I ever reviewed on the channel. Um, this is when I first started my channel. This film actually came out. I had a good time in the cinema with this. I love the way it was filmed. Sam Mendes done a really good job with the one take and everything. It's story for me that didn't really hit all the right notes. <clears throat> now, I know it's hard to do a one take film with a you know, more of a story than getting to A to B. It sort of had to be this. So I do get that. Um, but for me, it just wasn't all that entertaining. But I did appreciate it. For me, this is like a 7 out of 10 film. I mean, there's some really, really well-made filmmaking scenes here. Um, and the fact that it's all one shot, like I said, is quite amazing. So I applaud Sam Mendes for doing this. I would like to rewatch this because I think I would uh, really enjoy it a lot more the second time round. Um, but I'm glad to own it on 4K and I haven't watched it on 4K yet but I'm sure it looks amazing so since 1917 next up is Aladdin this is the Disney live action remake of the animated film of course now the animated film is my favourite Disney animated movie so this had a lot riding on it for me personally I really enjoyed it I know this film gets a lot of hate really well not a lot of hate but some people tend to just discard it and say it was a bit of trash and stuff. But other people I have heard have grown to like it. But I enjoyed the first time I went to see it. I thought Will Smith was brilliant as the genie. The whole look of the film is very, very colourful. And I suppose it has to be. But sometimes it does like look like it's a little bit of a theatre production instead of a movie. But apart from that, I haven't really got any problems with it. I would rewatch this again. I mean, it's not one of them Disney films where I'm going to go to the animated one every time. I would mix it up a little bit and I can see me going and watching this quite a few times. So, glad to own that one. Next up is Alien Covenant. Now, this is a film I don't particularly like. I mainly bought it to complete my Alien film collection there. Um, I don't own the others on 4K. I know there's only Alien out on 4K at the minute, but... I just got it to complete my little alien movie collection there. <clears throat> and I think this went too much down the Prometheus route. It's a sequel to Prometheus with Alien in the title, really. I mean, it just... <sighs> it just didn't hit any of the notes for Alien, Aliens, and even Alien 3 hit with me. In fact, I think I prefer Alien Resurrection over this. <sighs> it's okay, it's okay, but it has a lot of problems for me. The shower scene towards the end is quite good, actually. Um, quite a tense moment that one but overall I wasn't a massive fan of it so went to cinema to see that one next up is Alita Battle Angel now this is a pretty underrated film in my opinion I mean not many people went to see this going by the box office and stuff it's a fantastically visual looking film the main character you really get behind her and it's a brilliant world that's been created here and stuff and it leaves you on a cliff edge for the second movie. And I don't think we're going to get it. But I really, really wish we did. Now, a lot of people have sort of been talking about this lately. And they watched it a little bit late and said how much they like it. And I think a sequel would do way better than this film did. So, 
hopefully now people are more aware of this film we will get one but you never know but i i really do recommend watching this especially if you like you know, just sci-fi adventures movies and stuff it's a brilliant looking film it really really is and definitely give it a go one of my favorite films of 2019 i believe oh yeah brilliant film. sure that looks great on 4k haven't watched it yet though apart from the cinema Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, this is one of the back end of the Marvel movies in my favourites list. I do like it though, I do enjoy it. There's only really one move, Marvel film I really didn't, no, two Marvel films I really didn't like. One of them I will get to in a minute. But I had a good time with this. It's not as good as the first one, but I do like the introduction of the Wasp character. Michael Douglas is really funny in this with some of his one-liners and stuff. It's an entertaining film. It's a 7 out of 10 movie for me. Uh, Paul Rudd's always excellent, isn't he? I mean, you're always going to have a good time when he's in a movie. So, I'm on the Wasp. Decent enough. Next up is one of the best Marvel films out there, and that is Avengers Infinity War. A really, really good first part, that I feel, to two Avengers movies that sort of come together as one. It's just amazing to see it, really. is all these characters on the screen at once. I think it's really well built up scene by scene. It doesn't get too overcomplicated with the amount of characters they have. It just works really well, storyboarded really well. Thanos is an amazing villain, of course. And this has got a pretty grim ending. I mean, it's kind of depressing when you think about it and leaves it on a real, real cliffhanger. But this is one of the best Marvel movies out there. I love Drax in this film. He's my favorite Marvel character, I think. And he has some great moments here. But Avengers Infinity War, fantastic and of course next is avengers endgame the biggest movie ever made um yeah for me this slightly edges it over infinity war just because i love how much it all becomes tied in and how the story plays out and it's the end of phase three i believe phase three yeah <laughs> but just a, a brilliant brilliant film now i am re-watching the whole mcu right now and I'm reviewing each one of them on the channel. So I'll leave my MCU playlist down below. Thor The Dark World is the next one I'm going to review. But I can't wait to revisit Infinity War and Endgame on 4K. I'm sure they look amazing. Both of them are great films. Next up is Bad Boys. Now I bought this in preparation for Bad Boys for Life when I first started YouTube. Another one of the very first films I reviewed on the channel. I had seen snippets of this when I was younger. didn't really like it. But on this rewatch, I did. I thought it was a really fun film. Michael Bay does direct it a little bit weirdly. Like, a character will be shot. And a load of feathers will just fly over the screen. And a song <laughs> will come on in the background. It's kind of strange. Or Will Smith will be driving really fast. And then his camera will just zoom in right on his car there really fast. <laughs> but it's an enjoyable action cop film, if you like. Both of these are great on screen together. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. <clears throat> and it's one of my favourite Michael Bay films, actually. Next up is Bad Boys 2, another one I bought in preparation for Bad Boys for Life because I had never seen this. Um, I didn't like it as much as the first or the third. I think Michael Bay is just trying to do too much in this one. There's a 10 minute chase scene in this and it's just Ferraris and Lamborghinis being blown up. <laughs> But it's just the same chase scene all the way through. He doesn't do anything inventive with it or anything like that. I don't think he's great at action scenes. And I know that's what he's well known for. But I don't know. I, I, other movies have just done it way better than he does. And it's a bit of a drag, this one. It's like two and a half hours long. It's okay. It's like a five or six out of ten film for me, though. So definitely prefer the first one. But happy to own both. I do not own Bad Boys for Life. It's been on my list for a while now and I need to pick it up just to complete that little trilogy there. That is a franchise I'll have on 4K once I pick that one up. Next up is Beards of Prey, the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Um, I think they just changed the name to Harley Quinn when it was on the cinemas because <laughs> no one was going to see it. I like this film. I know a lot of people don't or have problems with it and i do as well I, I mean it's not a perfect movie by any means but it's a fun one i have a good time you know with the action scenes and the way that all slowed down people just getting really badly hurt by harley quinn and stuff 
My main problem was maybe the birds of prey. They didn't really bring much. They only become the birds of prey for like a short while in the film. Ian McGregor wasn't the best villain for me. I thought his sidekick, I forgot his name, was a way better villain. And I thought Ian McGregor was trying too hard. Definitely preferred him as the good guy in his films. But for me, I enjoyed this. I don't think it's that bad. Next up is Blade Runner 2049. Now, earlier last year, I rewatched Blade Runner. I hated that film the first time I watched it. When I rewatched it, I really, really appreciated how good it was. And then I went on to this one and I kind of felt the same. I mean, I didn't hate it as much as the first time I watched the first one. I did like this, but I just didn't, it just didn't click with me as much as it did with everyone else. Because I know a lot of people love this film. And I'm good. What it is with films with me, if people really appreciate it and it gets critically acclaimed and stuff, and I didn't like it the first time, I will always give it a rewatch. So I am looking forward to going back to this. There's definitely something there that I, I know I like, but I just, now I know what to expect, I think I'll like it much more a second time. Visually stunning though, one of the best 4Ks, I, looking 4Ks I own. So yeah, I'm gonna have to give this one another go. Bohemian Rhapsody, a film I had no interest in whatsoever, but my fiance is a big Queen fan. So I just went to cinema to watch it with her and I was blown away. This is like a solid 9 out of 10 film. I really enjoyed it. Rami Malek was brilliant. It's a really good music by Opic. You really get into it, you know, and for about a week, no, so let's say a month after I watched this film, I was just playing Queen constantly. I just thought, wow, these are really, really great. Uh, so fantastic film. Highly, highly recommend it, even if you don't like music biopics that much. Personally, I don't, but I always seem to enjoy them when I watch them, if you get me. Like, I never go on my way to watch them, but every time I do, they kind of work for me, like Walk the Line, another film I had no interest in. This is one of the better ones out there. Next up is Captain Marvel on Steelbook. Now, I don't own too many Steelbooks. There is one more in this collection. I'm not really a big steelbook collector, but I just got this one anyway. Now, this is Captain Marvel. I, hmm, this is one of the lower end of the spectrum movies for me, of the Marvel films. I don't dislike it. Like I said, there's only really two I've disliked, but it's definitely one of the weaker films. Pretty average. I couldn't really get on board with the Captain Marvel character. I don't know why, but if you want to look at the, at the steelbook, there it is. I did like the 90s throwbacks in this film, though, with the whole blockbuster and stuff. That brought back some memories. Samuel L. Jackson features heavily in this as well. I love him in everything. So, Captain Marvel, not a bad one. But I want to own every Marvel film in this collection. And I do own them all now. And this is one of the last ones I have to buy. So, happy to own that. Next up is Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Now, this is kind of like Blade Runner 2049, where I'm going to have to give it a rewatch. I was just kind of bored watching this. I thought it had a weird ending as well. It's just a bit of a drag for me, this film. It didn't quite hit the notes that it hits with a lot of other people. I know this is considered a Spielberg classic and stuff, but for me, it just, I didn't get anything out of this film, nothing. <laughs> so apologies to those people who do like this film, but I'm gonna have to give it another go. And I don't know if that's gonna be anytime soon, I'm afraid. <clears throat> Next up is Deadpool. Everyone loves Deadpool. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, just born to play this character. A very adult oriented comic book film, really. Lots of violence and swearing here. I love the way he talks <laughs> to the audience through the third wall, or the fourth wall, sorry. Um, a really, really fun film. It really is. And <laughs> I, I, love, I just find it so funny the way he keeps calling that. I forgot her name in the film, but she keep the girl with the, the short hair keeps calling her Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> Quite a funny movie, so Deadpool, yeah, glad to own that one in the collection. Next up is Deadpool 2. Um, I really enjoyed this one, actually. I think it's a solid sequel, more of the same, really, just lots of blood and fighting and stuff and swearing. And he gets a funny little team together in this one, Josh Brolin. Really, really welcome character, actually. So... Yeah, just more of the same as the first one. I hope we get a third and Marvel don't tone it down or anything. Keep it like, you know, 15 or 18 rated or whatever because it works so well. And I feel like it has to be 
Ryan Reynolds, once again, brilliant in this. Gotta love Deadpool. Next up is Doctor Sleep. Now, this is a Mike Flanagan film who is a director who's a bit hit and miss with me. He made a film called Oculus, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Then I watched Haunting of Hill House. I couldn't get into it. I know a lot of people loved it, but for me, there was just way too much CGI scenes, and it's the same with this one. Now, I don't dislike this film, but it's the overuse of the CGI for me that just didn't do it. Rose the Hat, played by Rebecca Ferguson, though, was unbelievable. What a performance that was. She is so sinister. The part where they suck the life out of that child is really horrendous to watch. It's a hard scene to see. Um, but this has got some really good moments going for it. Sequel to The Shining, of course. But it's got some problems for me as well. So, yeah, I mean... <laughs> 7 out of 10 movie for me, I'm afraid, but I'm glad to own it. I want to give it another go. So, I just to sleep. Now, when I was saying there was two Marvel films I couldn't really get on board with, one of them was Iron Man 2, which I did re-watch not long ago, and I still didn't think it was very good. And the other one is Doctor Strange. Now, I know a lot of people do like this film, but I just remember it being quite dull and depressing, really. I didn't like the location it was set in for most of the film and stuff. It just didn't do nothing for me. And I'm hoping next time around, well, because I'm going through the whole franchise right now, that I do enjoy it a lot more. And as much as some other people. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I wanted to own it because I own every Marvel film now. And I had to get it for the collection. So hopefully next time I get something out of this. Next up is Everest, one of the best looking 4Ks I own. You know, it just looks great with all the snow and, you know, being up Everest and stuff. It does what it says on the tin. It's about a group of people going up to the top of Everest. It is a true story, quite a depressing one at times as well. I mean, there's some really hard hitting moments in this. I don't think it's overall a great film, but it's decent enough. Jake Gyllenhaal, really, really good in this one. It's got a decent cast, actually. Next up is my favourite film of 2020. This came first in my 2020 top 10 films and that is Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman <sighs> personally I do prefer this over Snatch and Lockstock I know that's a bold statement but I just think this is put together so well it's hilarious I love Hugh Grant in this the way he tells the story between him and Charlie Hunnam but as he tells it it goes back and says everything that's been happening with Matthew McConaughey's character who wants to get out of the cannabis business I mean he's this big cannabis drug lord He's made his money, he wants to get out of it. But it's just a really, really well put together film. You know, scene by scene, it's just built up really well and just works on so many levels. The only problem I have is the ending. I mean, it's a little bit rushed, just the end. But apart from that, damn solid film. Highly recommend The Gentleman. Next up is Get Out, Jordan Peele's directional debut. Now, a lot of people really think this is like kind of a masterpiece and stuff. I personally don't. I think it's because I see in the end them coming. However, it's really well directed. It's a good film. You know, it's a really, really good movie. It is. But I see in the end them coming after about 20 minutes in. And I think that just took me out of the experience a little bit. It's also like a toned down version of Hostel with racial elements thrown in. I mean, you'll see what I mean when you watch the movie. It's not the gore and stuff, not, not that. But the way, you know, it works with this young character and the other characters around them, it just reminded me of a, a, a lot, a toned down version of Hostel. It really did. I know it's more. There's more to it than that. You know, there's a lot of messages in here and stuff. It's it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I don't love it as much as everyone else. Sound I'm really, really depressing here. I, I try to get the positive out of films all the time. So. On to some better stuff for me personally now, Ghostbusters 2. Now I know I said there's a few franchises here where they only own one of them on 4K. I, I do own the first one, but it is on Blu-ray. This is the first 4K I ever owned. Um, my, I had the first one, and you couldn't get the second one on Blu-ray at the time, I don't think. And my fiancé bought me it. Now, I got this like four years ago, but I only really started collecting them properly about two years ago. And my fiancé... Uh, about a year ago, sorry, and my fiancé bought me this because there was a Blu-ray inside. I didn't own a 4K player at the time or anything. So, 
in between this and the rest of them, there's a good two year gap there. But Ghostbusters 2, I think gets too much hate really. I think this is a really solid sequel. I have a lot of fun with this. I love the ribbon of ooze. The the guy in the picture, uh oh, what's his name? My mind always goes blank on these videos. Uh, Vigo the Barbarian is it? <laughs> um he is just a really menacing picture to look at. It's not a very nice piece of art. Well it is but it's kind of you know really evil looking and stuff and that just adds to the movie for me. Um Janusz as well, another great character. <laughs> He's just weird. <laughs> but I, I love Bill Murray in this, of course. And, you know, all of the Ghostbusters on screen just work so well together. So, I like this sequel. I think it's decent. So, yeah. Next up is M. Night Shyamalan's third part of his trilogy, Glass. Now, I think I prefer Unbreakable the best. This is okay. But it was kind of strange I feel um, especially when the ending didn't really sit right with me <sighs> but it's okay it's okay it's a, it's a decent ending to this strange trilogy let's say uh, but yeah good to see Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis back in the same movie again James McAvoy another great performance so yeah it's a, it's a decent film next up is Godzilla King of the Monsters I bought this in preparation for Godzilla vs Kong I thought it was okay. The human side of things is definitely the weak point of this movie. But some of the monsters look great in this, especially... Right, I'm not a big, massive Godzilla fan, so I am going to forget the name, but the one that comes out of the volcano or the mountain, that was terrifying. <laughs> uh, decent enough. Nothing special, but a good monster film. But I, I actually prefer that over Godzilla vs. Kong, and I know I'm in the minority there. Next up is The Grinch That Stole Christmas. Bought this around Christmas time because my fiance loves it. It's probably the worst looking 4K I own. It looks DVD quality, not even Blu-ray quality. It's it's not a great transfer, it really isn't. I think they rushed this out just to get it out up for Christmas time. Good film though, Jim Carrey <laughs> at his you know at his absolute best. This is what he does best doing the over the top comedic things. I love it. Where <laughs> he just shaves the mayor's head there. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, The Grinch. Decent Christmas film, of course. Next up, we have Hacksaw Ridge. Now, this is kind of like Full Metal Jacket, where half of it takes place in a boot camp and the other half takes place sort of in the war. I think it's World War II. Now, this is based on a true story about this young guy who doesn't want to take a weapon with him on the battlefield he doesn't want to kill anyone and it rubs his sort of fellow soldiers up the wrong way because they don't feel like they're going to be protected and stuff and it's a really fascinating story actually brilliant brilliant film from mel gibson i highly recommend this is one of my favorite war films of all time and looks amazing in 4k so definitely give it a go like i said mel gibson such a great director this apocalypse though he's made some crackers so hacksaw ridge really good film Next up is The Incredibles 2. Really, really good animated film from Disney. A lot of people waited a long time for this because they hold a lot of love for the first one. This is definitely Mrs. Incredibles film where Mr. Incredible has to sit at home with the kids and stuff. Decent story and stuff. Great animation. Looks great in 4K. I just do prefer the first one. A little bit there, but it's a solid, solid animated sequel from Pixar there. Next up is Interstellar. Now, this is a film I have only seen once at the cinema, and I found it really, really hard to sit through. I couldn't get into it at all, but I've heard a lot of people say that they appreciate this way more on a second time. A lot of people think this is a masterpiece. And like I said, if a film is critically acclaimed and I didn't get into it the first time, I will always give it a second chance. And I'm looking forward to watching this one. I have put the disc in because I've heard this is one of the best looking 4Ks. And it does look quite incredible, especially where they're on the planet, where they're walking on the water and stuff. That looked amazing. I didn't watch the whole scene, just snippets, because I don't want to ruin a movie for the second time I go back to it. I'm planning on watching this one soon, actually. So I'm hoping my mind changes. It's a, it's a very, very complex movie to process, though. Next up is The Invisible Man, one of my most surprising films of 2020. What, 2020? Um... I didn't expect too much from this because of the trailer and stuff. I thought, oh, it's going to be a generic horror movie. I'll go and have fun with it. But I think it came second on my top 10 2020 film list. Um, 
Elizabeth Moss is fantastic in this. She is just a great, strong performance as this female protagonist. So many tense moments where you know he's in the room, she knows he's in the room, but you don't quite know what's about to happen. And they are long, long drawn out scenes, but they work. The scene in the restaurant, I don't think anyone's seen that coming. A great, great horror movie moment for the modern era. Brilliant movie. It really is. I highly recommend this one. I like the way it's a modern take on The Invisible Man as well. Next up is It Chapter 2. I only own this one on 4K. I do own the first one on Blu-ray. Uh, disappointing sequel for me. I did like the first 10 minutes. I thought that was a great opening to the movie because I remember that from the novel so vividly in my memory. And it's exactly how I pictured it in this film. I mean, it's done that a few times for me, especially with Harry Potter and stuff. It's great when you see the novel come to life and it's exactly how you imagined it in your head. But there is too much CGI in this film for me. It's just overused. It doesn't work for me personally. The first one is really, really good. I do prefer the miniseries over both. But this was a real letdown for me. Um... The, the scene where the old, where Beverly Marsh goes to the old woman's house, what the hell were they doing with that? I mean, the miniseries just done it way more creepier and better with way older technology. It was just a CGI blob thing chasing it. It was stupid. <sighs> yeah, it, Andy Muschietti just really over CGI the shit out of this. I don't mind CGI, like I said, as long as it's done right. Next up is John Wick. Now, I have only ever seen this one out of the three films. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. John Keanu Reeves, you know, was a real kick-ass character in this. Some great fight scenes and stuff. Simple story that works. You know, he's getting revenge for these guys killing his dog and robbing his house and stuff. But he's a, he's a badass in this. He really is. I mean, not many people are going to beat John Wick in a fight. Some really, really well choreographed fight scenes. And... A film called out lately called Nobody, which is just amazing, so done in the same style as this. Definitely took inspiration from John Wick, but I can't wait to check the other two out. I'm going to have to get them on 4K soon. Next up is my favourite film of 2019, Joker. And this is probably in my top 25 films of all time. I was blown away by this movie. I have watched it again on 4K, blown away once again. I love Joaquin Phoenix in this. He's just deserved the Oscar so much. The score adds so much to this really depressing, gritty Gotham that they have there. The score just works so well with it. Brilliant story. <sighs> An anti-hero that you just love to follow. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix is in every scene in this film virtually and you cannot take your eyes off him. And some shocking moments in this. <laughs> Especially the part on the train and the part with the Robert De Niro's, you know, the chat show host at the end there. My only problem with this film is I just wish that last scene wasn't in it. If it wasn't, I would give this film a 10 out of 10. And that just so took something away from me. Why did they include that last scene? I will never know. But a solid movie. One of the best I've ever seen. Next up is Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. I had so much fun with this film. Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart. You know, Jack Black and Karen Gillan. Just a brilliant cast of these four characters who just have fun together. Kevin Hart is so funny in this. <laughs> like, one of his weaknesses is... Uh, what is his, weak, his weaknesses was running fast and then they're, run, they're running from some, some animals or some monsters that are chasing him and he's going, why am I running so slow? <laughs> um, but yeah... Really, really fun film. I was really surprised at this because I have so much love for the first Jumanji, but this was a great remake or reimagining, if you like. It might even be a spiritual sequel, whatever that means, because I think there's nods to the first one, but highly recommend this. I have a lot of fun with Jumanji. Welcome to the Jungle. And then, of course, we do have Jumanji The Next Level. Not as good as the first, but still enjoyable from start to finish. So the fact that it's all in a video game instead of a board game really does, you know move with the times really so yeah kevin hart again is the standout for me i mean all four characters are great but kevin hart is just a standout he really is now they were in different characters bodies in that one and it was kind of mm, i don't know if it was working on all levels that's why i think i prefer the first one just a little bit more there next up is knives out um ryan johnson directs this film so well i mean it's just so well put together 
got a great cast in there and it looks like he's got a great cast for the second one that's coming out soon as well here's some of the characters who are on board um she was this girl was the standout for me though the one who's going to be in the new the new james bond movie oh what's her name uh, anna de Armas. she was the standout character for me it does mainly focus on her um my only little gripe with this film is kind of like get out i just guess the ending and when it's a whodunit film, you don't really want to guess the ending. So that was my only little gripe. But it's a really, really well shot film. Really well acted. Really well put together. Can't wait for the second one. Looks great in 4K as well. Next up is Le Mans 66. A brilliant recent movie. I'm not really a recent fan, but this and Rush make for great films. So maybe I should... Give Reason a chance, the sport of Reason, really. Really good story. True story as well, I believe. Um, Matt Damon and Christian Bale, just brilliant in this. I mean, you're always going to get a great performance from Christian Bale, aren't you? And this is no exception. So, The Man 66, I forgot the real... It, it's a, it's got a different name in another country. I forgot what... In the US, I forgot what it's called. But looks great on 4K. Highly enjoyed this one. 2019, for me, is a really good film. A year for films, actually. I think I think there was some corkers that year. And I think that was three in a row there. Oh, not, not in a row, but Knives Out, The Man 66 and Joker. Really good year. Next up is Life. Now, this is a really surprising film for me. I loved every second of this. It was so well put together. It's kind of this little life force is getting bigger and bigger on this ship and starts to kill off the human characters. Rebecca Ferguson is one of my favourite actresses, and I loved her in this movie. A really, really good film. I highly recommend it. I can't remember the... They, they give a name to this little life force, and it's got a mind of its own, but giving the name to it, it just brought it on as a character so much, even though it's just this little creature that's grown and grown. Uh, but I really enjoyed this film. Highly, highly recommend it. Underrated movie. With a brilliant ending. Yeah. Next up is The Lion King. I had a lot of fun with this movie at the cinema. My only problem is I'm probably, unlike Aladdin where I might switch a little bit, I'm going to go to the animated one. I mean, this this is CGI done right. It looks brilliant. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it, but I, I think I'm just going to go to the animated one. But I'm glad to own it in 4K. I have had a little look at it in the player. It looks great. So... Yeah, I'm glad to want to look. I'm not saying never say never. I might go back to this again, but saying that, I might actually, because there's a sequel coming out to this one, which might make me revisit that on 4K again. So, yeah, I'm glad to own it. Next up is The Maze Runner, The Death Cure. Now, this is a franchise where I only own the third one on 4K. I do own the others on Blu-ray. It's This is a decent movie. I do prefer the first two. I think it's too much I like the second one, because the first one and the second one do so much different. You know, they'll take place in different worlds and stuff. Well, different parts of the world, if you like. This one is a little bit too much like the second, but that's not a bad thing because I really enjoyed the second one. Uh, but it just doesn't give anything a little bit different. I really like all these characters that are involved in this movie too. It's a great idea for a film, great concept and stuff. And this actually looked really good on 4K as well. Next up is the Meg. A film I had a lot of fun with at the cinemas, really. <laughs> um, there's a really funny moment in this film where towards the end there's a lot of people on the beach and stuff and the shark's coming towards it and this kid goes, Oh my God! And then the camera cuts and he's just pointing to a lot of, a lot of girls in the bikinis. He's like all oh, made up to see it. <laughs> you think it's going to be the shark? The biggest shark you'll ever see in a movie, this one. Uh, but yeah, Jason Statham just... Punching the shit out of the shark is, makes for great view. And I had a lot of fun with this one. It's a decent film. It's stupid, but it's decent. Next up is Mission Impossible Fallout. A series that has really grown on me lately. I didn't get round to Ghost Protocol and Fallout until last year. The first time. And I loved both of them. Um, it's kind of hard for me to pick which one I like the best. But they are both solid, solid movies. And again, Rebecca Ferguson was such a welcome character to these two films. Henry Cavill played a really good villain, actually. The last act of this is so explosive, just works so well. Can't wait for Mission Impossible 7, but this is a 
brilliant action film. It really is. Tom Cruise as well. He's another one who's really grown on me as an actor. When I was younger, I couldn't really take to him. I don't know why, but I love the guy now, especially because of them Mission Impossible films. Next up is probably the best looking 4K I own, and that is Mulan. This looks unbelievable in 4K. It's so well shot. Cinematography is unbelievable. And not a bad film either. This is another Disney live action that gets a bit of hate. I think nearly all the Disney live actions do, don't they? A lot of them are hit and miss. Um, apart from the latest one, Cruella, which everyone seemed to love. Um, but I thought I, I enjoyed this. I thought it was a decent live action film. Um, a lot of fun. Lots of fight, big fight scenes. The only the witch was a bit of a mm, shaky character there. But I, I, I really like this. The, the, the look of this on 4K, it was just amazing to look at, it really was. The look is better than the film, even though the film's good. But the picture quality on this is unbelievable. So if, you, if you're thinking about getting 4K, start with this, because it looks brilliant. Next up is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. A film I am really, really looking forward to going back to. i only seen it once at the cinema. I have put this in the drive to see how good it looks. It looks brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to revisiting Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Quentin Tantino is my favourite director ever. I've seen it as movies plenty of times. But this one, I've only seen the once. But this hit all the right notes for me at the cinema. I loved it. I just had such a good time with it. The ending was brilliant. DiCaprio and Brad Pitt are just brilliant on screen together. So many great characters. It's just a really, really good film. He really takes you to that time period of the late 60s. You feel like you're there. And Tarantino is a master of his craft. And I, I really enjoyed this film. I just think it's so good. Next up is Onward. A 2020 Pixar film. Uh, I thought Tom Holland done the voice acting brilliantly here. I mean, I can see him doing a lot more voice acting in the future. It's about two elves who sort of go on a road trip, basically. And there's something else thrown in there with something to do with their father, which will be explained in the film. But I enjoyed it. You know, and, uh, it's nothing amazing or anything, but I had a good time with this one. Uh, some really... <laughs> A very, very emotional ending. One of the most emotional endings in a Disney Pixar film, put it that way. Um, but my biggest problem was, I think it's Chris Pratt who does the voice of this. He's a bit of an annoying character, the older brother. Mm, just at times there, but decent film. Glad to own it. Good Pixar film. Next up is Parasite. Now, this has a black and white version in it, and that would be really interesting to watch, actually. This is... A Exceptional movie, it really is. Um, another 2019 film, <laughs> I think. Uh, but yeah, but just pfft. this has got a lot of mishmash of genres in there that just work so well together. It's about a family who move into a rich family's home by sort of scamming them, and their lives are turned upside down for the better, really, just for a small period there. But that's all I'm gonna say. There's if you haven't seen this film, you're best going in kind of blind. There's funny moments, there's shocker moments, tense scenes. It's got everything, so I highly recommend this one. Next up is Pet Cemetery, the remake to the original Pet Cemetery, and it's decent, but I do prefer the original. My main reason being the Jude Candle Candle character isn't as good in this one. I love the way he says the word road in the first one. He's like, stay away from that road. Yeah, that's a terrible road. But in this one, I was anticipating how he was going to speak. And he just spoke like a normal guy. And I was like, ah. <laughs> so, it's decent. It's decent. But the first one is where it's at. And way more scarier than this one. But this is okay. It's not bad. Wish they would have went a little bit more in a different direction though. Next up is Power Rangers. This is a film that actually quite surprised me. I used to love the Power Rangers as a kid, and I didn't know what to expect from this. I hope I was hoping it was going to be great, and it was. I mean, they're not really the Power Rangers in the film. This is definitely more focused on the origin of it. But there's some great battles towards the third act and stuff like that. I liked all the characters. Worth a watch, <laughs> especially if you like Power Rangers as a kid. This is decent. A lot of advertising in there, though, for... Is it Krispy Kreme Donuts? I think they advertise that a lot in this film, but I enjoyed it. 
thought it was decent. Next up is the Page Election Year, another franchise that I own, but only this one on 4K. <laughs> I haven't seen this one since it came out, but I remember thinking it was alright actually. Um, goes in a little bit of a different direction. I think they're voting on a political party who allow the page or are going to extend the page or something like that. I can't quite remember. But I thought this was going to be quite terrible and it wasn't. It was actually a decent third part to this franchise. So there's a new one coming out called The Forever Page, which I'm looking forward to. Actually, the trailer looked decent. But yeah, page election year. Not a bad horror movie. Next up is A Quiet Place, and this is a really, really well-directed film from John Krasinski. I thought it would have been better at the cinema because of how quiet the movie is, and I finally got to live that experience with the second one lately, which is just an unbelievable sequel. But this is decent enough. Emily Blunt, great in this film. A shocking opening five minutes. I mean, <laughs> quite hard-hitting, put it that way. One of the best openings to a horror film I've seen. But then the second one did actually make it a better opening. But this is a, a decent start and it gets you right in the mood. And these they, these creatures are so dangerous. Tense film, really well directed. Glad to own it. I will definitely, definitely be getting that second one on 4K when it comes out. Because it's one of the best looking films I've ever seen. Next up is War of the Planet of the Apes. Yes, the, I only own this one out of all three of them on 4K. Really good film. I mean, th this... There's a character in this who's there for comedic value and he sort of works. I mean, that could have really hurt the film if it didn't, but he does well. Now, sorry, he's a welcome character. Now, the bad guy in this was really great. He's played by Woody Harrelson. Really, really strong villain in this one. But I'd enjoy all three of these films and each one of them is solid enough. But this looks brilliant in 4K. One of the best looking 4Ks I own. Next up is Jigsaw, a film that gets way too much hate from the franchise in my opinion. I actually think it's one of the better Saw films. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it. Really well directed actually, especially compared to Part 7, which is kind of like a B-movie. This is way more production value and stuff. I had a good time with Jigsaw. I think it's decent entry into the Saw franchise. So, I, I, I think it's... Does this all take place on like a farmhouse or something? I can't quite remember too much, but I remember enjoying it. I actually preferred it to the newer one, Spiral. I think this is it's just one of the better sort of films, in my opinion. You know what you're getting with them, really. Next up is The Shape of Water. Brilliant looking film. Really well directed. Cinematography is unbelievable. It's kind of a weird one, though, with this woman sort of falling in water with this... Sort of fish looking creature. <laughs> and the way it all comes together in the film is there's water all over the place. I mean, the theme of water is definitely in this film. There's leaks in the little ho in the little apartment she lives, it leaks everywhere and stuff. <laughs> um I enjoyed it. It's kind of it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea though, but I'm really looking forward to rewatching this one again. I I, I had the I thought it was good. The first time, but I know it's going to be a grower when I watch it again, but uh, yeah, decent, decent movie. Next up is Sicario from Denny Villeneuve. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce his name properly. I always get it wrong. Um, Emily Blunt once again in this one. She's becoming one of my favourite actresses lately. I love Ben Shield Del Toro in this. I think his character's amazing, even though he's a hard ass at times. Really great score, basically about these three characters trying to bring down the Mexican cartel, really. Um, really, really well shot. One of the best looking 4Ks I own. I think along with Mulan, this might be the best looking 4K I own. Um, just a really, really good film. Really, really enjoyed this one. I really did. However, I do prefer Sicario 2. I just think it's more brutal, more intense. It just goes for it and it's really, really dark at times and... So many bad characters in this one doing terrible things. Um, Bencio del Toro ups his game for this one. Josh Brolin's really good in this as well, actually. There is no Emily Blunt, though. I wish she was in this film. Uh, but it, it's a solid sequel, and one for me that is better than the original. Like Quiet Place 2 beats the original for me, Sicario 2. Slightly better than the first one. 
Next up is Sonic the Hedgehog, one of my most surprising films of 2020. I didn't hold, hold any hope for this whatsoever. I did look forward to it because I'm a big Sonic fan, but I just thought it was going to be terrible, especially with the first design he had and they had to change it. I thought, well, that's not a great start at all, but I had so much fun with this. It's definitely more of a kids and orientated film. Dr. Robotnik was great in this, played by Jim Carrey, just going back to what he does best again. He could tell he's having the time of his life <laughs> in this role. Can't wait for the second one with Knuckles and Tails coming into it. I'm a big, big Sonic big video game fan, so glad to see some of these video game movies are sort of going in the right direction here. I'm hoping Uncharted and the new Resident Evil film and stuff can pick that up because there's a lot of potential for video game movies out there. Make Bioshock, make that one next. <laughs> next up is Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, the first time I watched all these Marvel films, this was my number one. I don't know if it's going to change on rewatch, but I love this Spider-Man movie. I love Tom Holland in the role. He's brilliant. He's my favourite char Spider-Man character. He's my favourite person to play the character of Spider-Man. This has one of my favourite movie scenes of all time in this with Keanu Reeves' character. Is it? Is it the Vulcan, is it? Oh, I can't. It is Vulcan, isn't it? I think it is. Um, where he's in the car and he knows Peter Parker. Is, it just clicks in his brain. And it's so tense, him looking in the mirror at him. And he's, he's like, I bet your friend Spider-Man, when he showed up, you felt safe, huh? Good old Spider-Man. And I'm just like, oh, what's going to happen here? It's <laughs> just a great scene. Um... I know there's a lot of amazing movies out there, like Goodfellas, The Godfather and stuff, but this is honestly probably my top 10 scenes ever. <laughs> I just love it to death. Really good film. Looks great on 4K as well. Can't wait for Spider-Man 3. And, of course, we do have Spider-Man Far From Home as well. Uh, I didn't think this was as good as Homecoming, but it's still a really, really good film. The first one we've seen Spider-Man come out of New York, really, sort of in Europe there. And... Yeah, I, I just, I enjoyed it. Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio was really good. I knew he was a, a villain <laughs> going into this, but even he, I would be convinced that he might be a good character. And when the whole thing unfolds, where he's just been sort of playing with the audience and playing with Peter Parker and stuff, or Spider-Man, it's just like, oh, no way. <laughs> and that was one of the, the best film scenes I've seen in any Marvel film, when it all unveils. Mysterio was just in his mind and stuff. Jake Gyllenhaal was great in this, so decent, decent sequel. Like I said, can't wait for Spider-Man 3. I hope the whole multiverse thing works, because it might become too com complex, and then a lot of films might die try and copy it. So I'm hoping it works, because we're getting it in The Flash as well, I believe, with Michael Keaton's Spider-Man. Next up is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Sony, Sony Studios are really ki <laughs> killing it here with these animated films, because they've just done Mitchells and the Machines. And the two of the best animated films I've seen. But this is a really, really fun movie. Uh, Miles Morales is a real good character, actually. And I just like the way... Speaking of these multiverses, might and work. It works in this one, put it that way. <laughs> uh, I just love the animation in this. The animation is the best thing about this one. But it's, it's, a, it's a really fun film. It really is. And looking forward to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Part 2. I know that's in production now and stuff. But, yeah. Great animated film, it really is. Next up is A Star Is Born, Bradley Cooper's directional debut, I believe. And he's starring alongside Lady Gaga. Who This is a real acting debut, I suppose. She, I know she's been in Exodus here and there, but she blew me away in this. And I just thought these two on screen together were brilliant. It's a really, really good story. Um, some heartfelt moments and stuff, but I really got into this. I thought it was an excellent film. And I done a collab video with my friend John Petty from Mondo Chelovic Movies, and we both picked our five favorite uh, characters, basically, or acting performances. Sorry, and he picked Lady Gaga in one of his top five, and he's seen a lot of films, so it just shows you how good she is in this film. Uh, really, really solid movie. Glad to own it in the collection. Next up is the one before Glass, which we spoke about before, and that is Split. Um, I like this film, but I, I don't know. It, sometimes it just goes a little bit... I get a bit lost sometimes. Like, 
I don't think it's as amazing as everyone makes it out to be. But James McAvoy is as amazing as everyone says he is in this one. I mean, he's playing so many different characters and personalities and he's just gets them all spot on. And you just know every time he jumps into a different character, you know <laughs> that he is just playing the, sh the acting the shit out of that character. You can tell each time that he's become someone else. He, he never, ever feels the same. He's unique every single time. And that must be really hard to nail down as an actor. So he's done great here. And uh, it's kind of a horror movie, this one. I mean, it's got a really tense, built-up third act, I suppose. But <laughs> the final scene there was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, you're always going to get a twist from M. Night Shyamalan, aren't you? Next up is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now, I only own two... No, the first seven I own on Blu-ray, but this is a 4K that I picked up. I thought this was okay. I enjoyed it at the cinema. I know a lot of people don't love this trilogy. It's an argument I'm not really going to get into because you're either, you're either the prequels, the original trilogy, or the sequel trilogy, aren't you? I mean, a lot of people who love that original trilogy don't tend to love this trilogy. But I, I think it's decent enough. I have a lot of fun with it. I have fun with nearly all the Star Wars films. I'm not a massive over-the-top Star Wars fan. I mean, I know a lot of people love the franchise so much. I just like them. I watch them. Move on. Um, but I thought this was decent enough. <laughs> Bit strange with Luke Skywalker, though, when he drinks the milk. <laughs> and he just goes... <laughs> wipes his mouth there. <laughs> Next up is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, same feelings as The Last Jedi. I had fun with it. It's not too memorable. Looked great. Well filmed and stuff. A lot of people say the story doesn't make sense and stuff. But I didn't really notice that too much. I just watched it and had fun with it. I mean, I really like Rey as a character. I think she's a great addition to the Star Wars universe. Um, Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's too bad Rise of Skywalker. I really don't. Sorry, <laughs> spilled a few DVDs there. A lot of people probably in the comments now go, oh my God, Rise of Skywalker sucks. This guy knows nothing. <laughs> Just my opinion, guys. Next up is Solo, the Star Wars. A Star Wars story. This is the origin story of Han Solo. Another film I had great fun with. I couldn't really get on with Alden Ehrenreich. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I think they could have cast him a little bit better as Han Solo. He wasn't bad, but he didn't really blow me away or anything like that. But I had a lot of fun with this film. I think it's a really decent movie. The part on the train and stuff, around the cliffs, and that, that was really well filmed. Uh, I had a good time with it. Um, we've also got Emilia Clarke in there, obviously known for Game of Thrones fame. Welcome, welcome character to this film. I, I, I enjoyed Solo, a Star Wars story. I really did. Next up is Tenet. I really, really enjoyed this at the cinema, but I was getting lost in the story as it went on. And in the end, I just had to give up and say, yeah, I have no clue what's going on. But I'm really looking forward to revisiting this. I have put the 4K in the disc drive. It looks amazing. Um, so this is like a HMV boutique one with a big booklet inside and stuff. Some great scenes here, especially the reverse fight scene. That was unbelievable to watch. Uh, I don't know how Nolan filmed that. I really don't. He must have took such a long time. But, yeah, I, I like this movie. I thought it was a really, really good film. And I'm looking forward to revisiting it. I think, I, kind of like Inception, I didn't get it the first time. Second time, I got a little bit more. Third time, I got it. And I went, wow, what a movie that is. Hoping this happens with Tenant. A lot of people say they can't be asked to revisit that. But I'm looking forward to it, actually. Next up is Terminator Dark Fate. Definitely the best Terminator film after 1 and 2. This is a film that gets a lot of hate. A lot of people don't like the story direction it goes in after the first five minutes. I get that. I do get it, but I can look past it. Definitely the best villain as well since the T-1000. I thought this had a, such a solid villain in there. He was great. Some great you know, scenes where uh, chase scenes that end up in a big gun battle and stuff like that. Linda Hamilton. Not not a best portrayal of Sarah Connor, but she was really good in this film. I was glad to see her come back to the franchise. I enjoyed it. I did. And um, I forgot her name. Megan something. I forgot her name. Megan. The one who plays this character. My mind's gone blank. Once this video ends, I'll, I'll remember her name. <laughs> she was really, really solid in this as a solid character. I mean, she's like half human, half android sort of thing. 
Um, she was great. So I, I, I really like Dark Fate. I'm glad to own her. And that, I'm a lover of Terminator 1 and 2, but I thought that was a welcome addition. Next up is They Live. Now, I've only seen this once. Didn't love it. Looking forward to revisiting it because a lot of my friends swear that they love this film so much. And I know it's a great concept and stuff like that where this guy just puts the sunglasses on and he can tell if people are aliens or not. That's a really fun sounding film. But I don't know, it just didn't hit me the first time. So I'm going to give it another go soon. I think I'm going to review that one on the channel when I do revisit and do a horror revisited episode. Next up is Thor Ragnarok, most people's favourite Thor film, and I had a lot of fun with this when I first watched it. One of the best looking 4Ks I've seen as well. It kind of pops out the screen, it's kind of a 3D effect this 4K gives off. It's kind of weird, but it works for me. Very, very colourful movie. I love the fight with the Incredible Hulk and Thor. Uh, yeah, Jeff Goldblum in there as well. Can't really go wrong with Jeff Goldblum, can you? Solid Thor movie. Looking forward to re revisiting this one. Um, my memory's a little bit blank with it now. I mean, not blank, but I'll remember more when I rewatch it, of course. But Thor Ragnarok is a decent Marvel film. Next up is Three Billboards Outside Ebon Missouri. Couldn't recommend this more enough. I mean, Woody Harrelson in there, Sam Rockwell, Francis McDormand, who always gives a good performance. Solid cast, solid story. This is about her daughter who's gone missing, and she wants the police to do more about it. The, the local sheriff, played by Woody Harrelson, she puts all these billboards up saying the police are doing nothing about it, nothing to help my daughter and stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's a decent story, it really is. Uh, Highly recommend this one. I do. Next up is Toy Story 4, one of the best animated looking movies of all time. <laughs> you can tell so much care goes into these from Pixar. This is a film I didn't really want. A lot of people didn't want it because 3 ended so amazingly and so well. But it somehow worked. I mean, we could still do without it, but this is still a fun film to, to watch. Mostly takes place around this theme park and stuff, which really adds to the whole Toy Story theme. Toy's theme parks just works, doesn't it? And this is definitely Woody's story, this one. Um, yeah, I Forky was a welcome new character, really. I enjoyed this a hell of a lot. Next up is Us. This I do prefer over Get Out. I know I'm probably in the minority there, but I just think this is way more, way more clever. Love the opening scene at the circus, or the fun fair if you like. Um, it's really, really creepy when you see this family who look exactly the same, knock on the other family's house and they're answering the door and you just look exactly like them. That is so creepy. <laughs> really well executed from Jordan Peele. I love this film. I thought it was great. And the way they all come together at the end just worked for me. So I do prefer Us over Get Out. So, <laughs> yeah, really, really good film. Us. I, yeah. One of my, one of, one of my favourite modern horror films, if you like. Next up is Venom, a film that gets way too much hate, in my opinion. I had such a good time with this. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Tom Hardy, really good in the role, but when Venom comes into it, it just takes the movie to another level. I just had such a fun time with it. I really did. Um, like a turd in the wind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the second one. A lot of people hated the trailer and stuff like that, but I'm looking forward to it. I am. I do not see the hate for this film. It's probably not on any Marvel films level, but it's still a solid movie for me. I, I, I enjoy it. Next up is Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. <sighs> yeah, I mean, this is a weak film. It was. I mean, all these characters, I just couldn't get on board with them. They were all like... Do you know when you go in a game like Overwatch or something and make your character and they've got like big green hair and stuff and just way over the top the way they look and no one would look like that really. <laughs> well they would but you know not all together in one place. <laughs> it was just like a comic book film it didn't I mean there's a moment where this woman snipers through Vin Diesel's fingers. I'll try and do it now but he does this like count or something and she fires a sniper bullet through them fingers. <laughs> it's very, very far-fetched, it really is. It's alright, but 
I think it's the weakest out of Triple X films, and that is not saying much, is it? Because it's not exactly a brilliant franchise or anything. And lastly, we do have Zombieland Double Tap. <sighs> Great sequel. Really enjoyed this one. Um, <laughs> loved the way they're in the White House and stuff. I love these four on screen together. The great Woody Harrelson especially. Um, I forgot his name in the film. Oh, what's his name? I forgot his name in the film, but it's a great name. <laughs> Damn, I wish I remembered it. Um, really, really good sequel, this one. I really enjoyed it. I love a good, fun zombie movie. And this just knows exactly what it is. Uh, just, I just had a good time with it. Rosie Dawson as well. Rosario Dawson in that monster truck and stuff. <laughs> great, great stuff. Decent, decent zombie land, double tap. Okay, guys, that is it for my 4K collection video. I'll do another one of these next year. Sure, I'll have probably maybe double this or something because I do tend to buy a lot more 4K soon. Next collection video is going to be my entire Blu-ray collection video. Every single Blu-ray and 4K I own all in one big video. I like to cut them into parts sometimes, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do the big whole lot soon. I don't know when, maybe in a month or two, so I'll look out for that. It'll probably have to be in a few parts there. So, hope you all enjoyed this 4K collection video. Is there any titles that here that you think I need to add into the 4K collection? What did you think of these films that I own? Let me know down below and I'll try and reply to every single one of you, I promise. Uh, but yeah, I had a lot of fun making this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to subscribe, it's up to yourself. Lots more videos coming, of course. Take it all easy, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Hey, guys, I realised I forgot a movie. I'm so sorry, silly me. But that is Creed 2. I forgot to take it off the shelf. <sighs> Which is kind of annoying, but I'm just going to have to throw it in at the end of the video here. Um, Really, really solid sequel to Creed, a welcome addition to the whole Rocky franchise in general. Really enjoyed the nods to Rocky IV, really. I mean, it's kind of a sort of side story to Rocky IV, if you like, with Ivan Drago's son there fighting Creed. Michael B. Jordan puts everything into this character. He's a very, very different character to Rocky himself, but a determined champion, of course, and... I really enjoyed this one. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in Creed 3. So, sorry I forgot this one, guys, but it is here at the end. Uh, I do apologise, but thanks so much for watching. Take it all easy. See you all next video.